ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Dear brothers and sisters I'm your host brother Abdul Qadir Ali Ambe and this is your program Islamica and today we are talking about the Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram, which is an important day in Islam. And what we are saying in Islam, we don't mean only the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because as we all are aware, that all the religions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Islam. And this day, the ninth, the tenth day of Muharram, is the day Allah, ta'ala, Allah gave success to Moses over his enemy and the enemy of Islam, Farwa, Fir'aun. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Sahih Muslim, of Hadith Aisha first, she said, alayhi wa radiallahu anhu, Allah be pleased with her, um, the early days of Islam, Abu Rasulullah sallam used to fast um, Ashura before Allah ta'ala revealed, uh, before Allah ta'ala make Ramadan obligatory upon the believers. And the Arabs, they used to fast as well. And then when Allah Ta'ala revealed Ramadan, then he stopped alayhi salatu was salam. And when he immigrated to Medina, when he immigrated to Medina, Rasul alayhi salam find the Jews are fasting. And then he asked them, and the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And then they said, the reason we're fasting this the day Allah Ta'ala gave success to Musa over Fir'aun, over Farwa, the enemy of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and the enemy of Islam. And then he said, Alayhi Salaam, we have more right to Moses than them and also we should fast. And also in another narration in Sahih Muslim, Abu Rasulullah Sallam said, if Allah Ta'ala give me a long life and I leave for next year, I will fast the ninth and the tenth to be different than them. But he did not reach alayhi salatu was salam. That's why it's sunnah to fast the ninth and the tenth or day before with the Ashura and day after with the Ashura. Whatever you could do, you should fast. And also, Sheikh Zayn Taymiyyah has mentioned that some people, they have a shower on the day of Ashura, and they put some kuhl on their eyes, and they put hinna on their beads and on their hair, and so on. All the hadith, on that, it's all fabricated and it's all weak. And then we, we should not act upon this kind of a hadith, upon this kind of narrations. Then it's very important that we fast, insha'Allah, the day of Ashura and the day of Tasu'a, the 9th and the 10th, or the 10th and the 11th, which means Friday and Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday. 
And also there is some ahadith which forbids, which is all authentic as well, to single out fasting on Monday and uh, on Fridays and also on Saturdays and also on Sundays. But here now with the Ashura or and with the uh, Yom Arafah and so on, this kind of it's called in Islam the water sabab, the fasting or the worship for reasons. That's why Sheikh Al Imam Ibn Ruslan said, Wajzim bi idkhali dawati sababi, warwi anil imami dhannan tusibi. Ay, dawati sabab, it's definitely involved. Like the forbidden time of the salah, like after Asr, after Fajr. But if there is a salah with reason, like Tahiyat al Masjid, or Rakatay um, Tawaf and so on, then you have to do it. That doesn't get is is not part of the general forbidding. Similarly, of this Saturday and Sundays and Fridays, if you do not single it out, you fast and uh, Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday, inshallah it's fine, and it's because of of reasons then it's very important that we take care of this. And the last point, not least, before I take your calls, is some people, they think that the Sunnis are happy of the killing of uh, the grandson of the Prophet And no Sunni on earth who is happy of the killing of the grandson of the Prophet But we don't celebrate for the death of anybody. Similarly, the way we, we don't celebrate for the birth of anybody, even including our beloved Prophet Isaiah, nor his birthday, nor his death day, we don't celebrate. Similarly, Umar is being killed. Abu Bakr is, and uh, Uthman is being killed, and Ali is being killed, and Hussein is being killed. Allah be pleased with all of them and put them in the high ranks in paradise. Then we should not single out any celebration or any rituals for anybody for their death or for their birthday. May Allah Allah reward you all and protect us all and make us those who follow the Quran and the son of our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And now shall we take the calls. First caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, is it uh, right to say that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in the year of elephants? Please let me know this, yes? He, 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 was, he was born what? Sorry? He was born in the year of elephants. Year is of elephants. to say like that, yes. Yes, there is no problem with that, insha'Allah. Okay. Exactly. Can you tell me any proof for this? Can you tell me any proof for this? Yeah, there's some of the seerah. It's been mentioned that he was born on, on, on that year. Some of the books of the seerah has mentioned, and some of the books of the Islamic history has mentioned that he was born on that year. But where the conflict is, is the day. There is no clear proof of the day that he, he was born, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether it's the ninth, of or 11th or 12th and uh, or 15 or more than that than that that's where the argument comes but as far as this agree that he was born at salam the year of the elephant that the year the elephant attacked Mecca with the Abyssinian troops Abraha May Allah Ta'ala cast them all, those who try to damage the Kaaba before, and those who are planning to damage the Kaaba now or in the future. May Allah curse them all. Jazakallah khayran. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I've got three questions. Is that okay with you? 
three is, is quite a lot, but it's try. Okay, I'll just ask you two then. <laughs> okay. Barakallah <laughs> fiq. Yes. Hey, Sheikh, um, I'm married and my husband works full time, uh -huh. um, five days a week. And when he's not working weekends, he spends a lot of time from 11 or 12 a day unless he's unfriendly. And I can't go with him because he say no, I'm going with them so just he stay home. So I'm by myself at home and we, ha we don't have kids. Mm -hmm. So um, when I try to talk about him, he say, you don't have right to talk about me, just meet together. Okay. Um, my so what um, can you advise me what to do? Okay, that's that number two. My second question is my husband, my family lives is like back home, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen them for so long. Mm -hmm. So I asked my husband to travel with me as Muhrim because I'm a Muslim woman. Okay. And he said I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna travel with you. So travel by yourself or stay. So what do I have to do? Jazakallah khair. Barakallah fiq. Make me dua for me and the our. Sisters and brothers in Palestine. My Allah, May Allah reward you all. That, that's a very good uh, reminder that you reminded us all of us, May Allah Ta'ala, protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine and protect uh, um, uh, them from the missiles of, uh, of the enemy. May Allah Ta'ala make it easier for them and, and also, inshallah, we should take any part that. We, we can support these people with their and uh, tragedies and uh, their casualties and and alhamdulillah the brothers are doing uh, a lot of fundraising especially the and uh, through islam general and uh, all these muslim charities please and please and please brothers and sisters support them as much as you can um my advice to this brother who is married to this sister and they have not any children and and he works in, uh, five days a week, Allah Ta'ala, and bless him is very important. But also, the woman has a right upon us. Our sisters has a right upon us to give them a time, to spend some time with them, to help them, to look after them, to entertain them, to and, uh, go out with them, take them where and, uh, if we are going out, and so on. And, and it's not right to lock them in the house and say, oh, you stay in the house and you stay indoors and you cannot and, uh, come with me. And, I'm, uh, and also I'm not going to take you to anywhere and uh, I'm, I'm going to galaban with my friends. That's not right. And this brother and all the other brothers and myself, we should all fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to spend some time with our family, with our children and give them a time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. The second question, who wants to travel? to her family, it's your responsibility, my respected brother, to take her and not her. And subhanAllah, she, she's the one who's supposed to fight that I want, I want to travel to my family. And uh, you are the one who's supposed to say, no, you're not traveling without me going with you and without mahram. Where's, where, where's the ghayrah of the, of, of, of the Muslim man? What happened to us? We should not let our wives and our daughters to travel by themselves and going and uh, wherever they want to go. And Muslims, they never used to be like this. And we should go with them. We should protect them. We should be on their side. Malas Allah guide us, this brother and all the other brothers and myself. And we should not do that. We should, and it's our responsibility, and to take our sisters if they are going to visit their family or going to visit Allah's house in Mecca and Medina and Jerusalem. We should take them. We should take them. We should not let them travel by themselves because it's forbidden. And it's a clear haram. May Allah Ta'ala guide us all. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I just want to ask you a question about Surah Al Tawbah, Ayah 29. So mm -hmm. if you can answer, uh, uh, tell me that question. Uh, because I just spoke to one of my uh, non Muslim. So I just seen, uh, can you just. 
clarify the uh, the uh, uh, 29 uh, surah to toba Ayah 29, Surah yes. Tawbah. Uh, Allah, if no, then inshallah we'll make it the next episode, we will, inshallah we'll talk about it. That would uh, be nice. Inshallah. Alright, cheers, thank you. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. Ayah 29 وقالت اليهود عزير بن الله وقالت النصارى المسيح بن الله ذلك قول بأفواههم يظاهرون قول الذين كفروا من قبل قاتلهم الله أن يفكون um, وقالت اليهود عزير بن الله the Jews they said Uzair is the son of uh, is the son of God, son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Christians they said Jesus is the son of God. And that's their claim. And that's equal to the word of the non believers before Allah Ta'ala cursed them. How do they understand? And that's how that's what it means that they should not go and they should not and uh, they should they shouldn't say that Allah Ta'ala has a son. Allah Ta'ala Lam Yalid Walam Yulad Walam Yakullahu Kufu Wanahad. Allah has no son and Allah Ta'ala has no daughters and Allah Ta'ala has no children and he's not in need of it. May Allah Ta'ala make us those who understand the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rizakumullah Khairan. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And to talk about khair, Sheikh. And Sheikh, can I ask you in Somali? Try to be quick. All right. So, what are the creatures that America will let go? Good day, and said America will have Allah to Allah. Will let go, Allah to so Korea. America is not going to have. And on the other side, what is the and I have to talk about khair. Um. I do have a and uh, let me uh, re remember, inshallah. And uh, sister is asking about the phrase, um, uh, which says about uh, the parents and uh, Rabbi Hamma Kamara Bayani Sahira. Um, let me remember the beginning of the ayah and. Inshallah, I will remember it, and inshallah, and I will, I will, I will say it to you, inshallah. Just, she's asking about that word, that an uh, ayah, which means that we should be, we should pray to, to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for our parents, that who brought us up when, when we were little. Inshallah, I will remember the ayah where it is. Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I just want to ask you one question. Um, when you're changing the baby's nappy, does that break your wudu? One, one what? When you're changing the baby's nappy. If you touch his or her private party. Yeah. Private party, yes. Okay. Then shall I, you should do your wudu, inshallah. Jazakallahu khairan. Okay, okay. Jazakallahu khairan. Barakallahu Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, my sister. Lakhsa. Channel can watch channel in Greece your way. Oh, Henry in a good you had the Ann and Murhim Hastening in Masafrica. So, I guess you got it so of the Lira and I. When I suffer to Maha, you should not travel. The sister is asking if she does not have a Maharam and can she and uh, travel. I said no. She should not travel unless it's a necessity, life and death. Or like if she's moving over this country and moving back home or moving and, and, you know, into Muslim land, then that journey, even though is not allowed, but it's an uh, excusable, but just travel and come back and travel and come back, no. And it's highly unlikely that she does not have uh, anybody, uh, husband or brother or sister, but the, uh, 
husband or brother or uncle or an, uh, maternal uncle or paternal uncle, then it's very important that we should see how important is this. And we should be very careful that necessity, necessity, necessity. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa I think I lost that caller. Next caller, please. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallahu khairan. Then it's very important that we all with Allah's religion should be very careful with that. It is very important that because our Asallam said in the authentic hadith clearly it's not allowed for a woman who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the last day to travel without mahram. Without mahram. That she should not travel. Even the scholars, as we said a lot of times, they said even the hajj is not obligatory upon her if she does not have a mahram to take her to the hajj, which is the, one of the most important pillars in Islam. Then we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jazakum Allah wa khayran wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Stay tuned Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ati'u allaha wa ati'u al-rasoola wa uli al-amri minkum Civil unrest inside Syria has now become a civil war. Tens of thousands have been killed and thousands more displaced. Ummah Welfare Trust has distributed food provisions to families inside Syria and to refugees in Jordan. £150 will provide a family with an emergency relief pack. Please donate and support our brothers and sisters with Ummah Welfare Trust, operating on a 100% donations policy. You all know that here at Sam's, we've been offering you our delicious secret mix of spices on our chicken for over 20 years. But did you know about our mega meal deals we have on right now? You didn't? Well, what are you waiting for? Come and get our tasty chicken wraps, two for three pounds. Succulent chicken fillet tower burgers, two for four pounds. Feast on a family special for only nine pounds 99, giving you more for less. Sam's, the home of great tasting chicken. Maher Zane is back with an incredible new album. Featuring 14 amazing tracks. Forgive Me is out in stores and on iTunes. Reed Foundation have been implementing educational and welfare projects in the developing world since 1994. We have 340 schools, educating 75,000 orphans and needy children for our own 4,000 teachers, making it one of the largest educational NGOs of rural Pakistan. £30 per month provides food, clothing, medical care and education. Please donate now. Visit us on reedfoundation.org.uk Hargala Diamond, luxury holiday homes and a great investment opportunity located in Tunisia. This resort of 120 luxury apartments has segregated hammam, children's play area, swimming pool and much more. All in a halal environment, two minutes from the beach. For more information, call us on 079611 70259 or visit hargala-diamond.com. Great investments with great returns. Ibrahim College's Route 42 weekend seminar will dive deep into Imam Nawawi's collection of 40 hadith under the instruction of eminent scholars. 
This weekend seminar will give you more than 42 lessons for personal development, more than 42 ways to strengthen your relationship with your Lord, a 42-point roadmap to success. So enroll yourself and your loved ones right now by visiting ibrahimcollege.org.uk or call us on 0207 377 Human Appeal, in partnership with Syria Relief, presents Sounds of Light 2012, featuring award-winning artist Maha Zain. Islamic trio Native Dean. Yahya Hawa. Visit soundsoflight.org or call 0161-225-0225. National Halal Food Group UK would like to take this opportunity to wish the Muslim Ummah a peaceful and prosperous New Year. Civil unrest inside Syria has now become a civil war. Tens of thousands have been killed and thousands more displaced. Ummah Welfare Trust has distributed food provisions to families inside Syria and to refugees in Jordan. £150 will provide a family with an emergency relief pack. Please donate and support our brothers and sisters with Ummah Welfare Trust, operating on a 100% donations policy. <laughs> أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله the sister who asked us and uh, who asked me about the the ayah for the parents, I remember the one in Surah Al-Ahqaf, um, ayah number 15, was saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says about in, uh, the parents, we should be good to them. And that, inshallah, in Surah Al-Ahqaf, she can find that sister. And inshallah, the other, the other also, when, uh, if she go through the tafsir, the other ayat will be brought in, the, in uh, will be found in the same place. Um, which Allah, Allah, Allah said as well, and uh, about the parents, that's the phrase with the sister she was looking for, insha'Allah. Next call, please. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, a brother, I want to ask you that one question. I um, see that the TV screen, um, the shu'ara is 24 of this month. Um, What's the shu'ara? And another thing is if, for example, I'm fasted, for example, the Friday and Saturday, um, because I missed the last Ramadan few days, um, so are you thinking it's like um, with sunnah to the qilla, um, for if I'm fasted that two days? Inshallah, and uh, some scholars they say and uh, that you can, uh, first ashura is the day that Allah Ta'ala gave success to Musa over Fir'aun. And that's why we are fasting, because the people of Israel, they used to fast, and that's why we are fasting as well. And to show that, and also we are very pleased that Allah Ta'ala gave success to Musa over his enemy and the enemy of Islam. And that's the reason for it. Your second question, if there were qada on you, 
that there was some fasting that you have to make up of Ramadan. Some scholars, they said, you have to do the, the make, making up Ramadan first, and then you do your uh, your Ashura or an uh, Arafah or an uh, Shaw, even the city of Shawwal. And some scholars, they said, no, because you have this for the whole year, but this is occasion occasions which came particular days, then you should fast. You can you can fast and then you you make up your and uh, the other days of and uh, you're making up fasting of Ramadan. You can you can make it up any any time of the year. You don't have a problem with that. Some scholars they say that, and inshallah. What I'll advise you is that you can fast Friday and Saturday. Friday is the 9th and Saturday is the 10th, which is the day we're supposed to fast. And if you could not make, if you could not fast on Friday, then you can fast on Saturday and Sunday. That means either day before with the day before or with the day after. Then the Ashura, which is the most important day, is on Saturday. Wadizakillahu khayran. Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I need to ask uh, a question. I work in the hospice and uh, we look after the case uh, cancer patients in their last days. Okay. And when they die, uh, we do their last offices, which means we just prepare them, clean them, and then take them into mortuary. Okay. So there are male patients as well. Okay. I, I want to ask, is it okay for me as a female, as a Muslim, to do that? Or am I committing sin? Yes, as a Muslim who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who wants to, wants to follow Allah's deen, you should not wash the body of the males after they die. You should not wash them. You should let the other men or the other people do that. And you do the, the girls or the women, inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And if you could not avoid that, then inshallah leave that job and Allah will give you better replacement. Allah will give you a better replacement because he promised that. And we should trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. Abraham said in the authentic hadith, whoever leaves something for Allah's sake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them better replacement. And no doubt about that. You will get a better replacement inshallah. And if you can avoid, avoid washing men and stick with washing the woman, then alhamdulillah, carry on your, your job and also keep me in your prayers. Well, Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have two questions. Go ahead. The first one is uh, when your parents die or relatives, and do you have to recite every Friday in Qulhuallahu Ahad Surah Al Qulhu? Okay. And also the second one and is when you breastfeeding, uh -huh. and you're milky and goes like uh, by accident to your, to your husband, like, and is he going to be, uh, am I going to be like, uh, and he's like his mother or, because that's what I had. Okay. Thank you. Zakillahu um, khayran. Do you, you read Quran, especially through on Fridays for your parents who are dead? No. That's not in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and anywhere in the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he did not advise us anywhere to do so. And that's innovation. You should not do it. For your parents, remember them in your dua. Remember them in your sadaqah. Pay them in, uh, whatever you could do. Dig them well. Take and uh, do hajj or, or umrah for them. Do sadaqah for them. Always keep them in your mind, in your prayers, especially when you are in sujood. Pray for your parents. Allah Ta'ala have mercy on Allah Ta'ala have mercy on them. 
Jazakallah khairan. The second point is, as you're breastfeeding, if some of your milk goes into you, you, your husband's tongue and uh, or his well of something, is, is, is that going to make him like uh, your son or daughter that you breastfeed them? No. But as men, we should avoid swallowing the milk of your, of, of your wife. But inshallah won't make you like, like you breastfeed him, no. Because the condition is that it has to be little and also when uh, to and, uh, give him some nutrition for, for that and, uh, child. That's why they said he has to be a small child. If you breastfeed, then it will, he becomes like your son or your daughter. What is that? Allah khaira. Next caller, please. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi, Sheikh. I've got one question. Go ahead, sister. I just want to know if Rukia is allowed in Islam to remove evil eye and jinn. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, Rukia is allowed, and the person can take the Rukia. And, uh, but it's better, and as I always advise, to do it yourself. To do it yourself, learn how to do it, and do it yourself. Read the Quran on yourself, read the Hadith on yourself, try to do Ruqya on yourself, do not ask anybody else. Unless it's necessity, and you cannot and, uh, get rid of uh, that evil eye, or jadu, or magic, or black magic, and uh, then, you ask somebody also who trustworthy. There's a lot of dodgy stuff going on in the market. Then you should be very careful who you're going for your ruqya and who you're asking for, the, for, for ruqya. There's a lot of people who misuse that. May Allah Ta'ala guide us to the right path. Then it's very important that you should know who you're going to. It's being recommended. Is the according to the Quran, the Son of the Prophet or He's using another shaitans and another evil and another devil, another devils. Then you should be very careful with that. What is that? Allahu khairan. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Akhi, can you put the volume of the TV down, inshallah? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Uh, my name is Ibrahim. I would like to ask the Sheikh regarding to the Ashura. Go ahead, Akhi. Um, um, how many supposed to do the, concern the Ashura? Is it one, two, or three, or somewhere? No, it's two. only two days, Akhi. Okay. It's two days. Either you do Friday and Saturday, mm. or you do Saturday and Sunday. Whatever you feel easy for you. If you are working on Friday, then shall I do Saturday and Sunday as a choice. You can do one day before or one day and one day after. Then it's only two. You either do Friday and Saturday or you either do Saturday and Sunday. What is that? Allahu Khairan. Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I have one question. Go ahead, sister. Is it, is it haram for a woman to take her eyebrow? Yes, you should not touch your eyebrow. The hadith is authentic, it's clear of hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Stay away from touching your eyebrow by any means. Jazakallahu khairan. Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, sister. Um, Sheikh, um, I just wanted to know um, if you could uh, explain to me clearly that um, uh, what times can we actually make dua in our salah and how? Um, sometimes, because as far as I know, that it's um, in your five salah, yes. um, in your sujood, you can only do it in Arabic. Yes. But when can you pray, pray, um, make dua in your own language um, and um, how? Exactly. khairan. That's a very important question. The dua, the dua inside the salah should be in Arabic. The dua inside the salah should be in Arabic because this salah 
cannot be used any other language. That should be clear. On the other hand, if, and first, as I always advise the Muslims to memorize some of the, uh, of the simple dua, which Asalam used to do it, and as I said from my grandmother, Allah Ta'ala guarantee her place in paradise, she used to memorize, Allahumma Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. And she used to sit in the corridor, and she used to sit in a, in a balcony, and she used to repeat that. And when I was little, I used to surprise, I used to, be surpri I used to get surprised from that. But subhanAllah, when I grew up and I studied, then I realized how this dua is very important. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma ghfir li. Allahumma ghfir li walidayya. Allahumma rahamhuma. Learn this kind of little duas, then you can do it in your sujood. For your parents. Oh Allah, forgive my parents. Allahumma ghfir li walidayya. Allahumma rahamu li walidayya. Kama Rabbi Yali Sagheel, as they brought me up when I was little, and I was in need of them. And unfortunately, a lot, a lot of people, they neglect their parents when we grew up. Manas ta'ala guide us all. Um, then it's very important that um, uh, we learn some of the small du'as that we can use in our salah. Okay, other than uh, outside the salah time, when can we do the du'as? You can do it after your salah, as individual. You can do any time. The dua has no time. And it's not like the salah that is, is sometimes, is, 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 it has sometimes it's been forbidden. No. The dua has open times. You can do any time. Raise your hands to your creator in your own language, especially at night, especially at night, in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night, raise your hands to your Lord, cry to Him, humble yourself to Him, ask Him whatever you wanted of this dunya and the life here after, ask Him, ask Him, ask Him everything, the smallest thing and the biggest thing you should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should not hesitate. And you should, as as Allah advised us, alihu fi du'a, like ask Allah Taala again and again and again, repeat it, pray to Him Subhanahu wa Taala, and He will accept your du'a. And He is the only one Subhanahu wa Taala who gets happier and happier when you ask Him more and more and more. But any human beings. They don't, they don't get happy regardless, even if, if your own father and mother, if you ask them a lot, they wouldn't like it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He likes those who ask Him all the time. Those who praise Him all the time. Those who humble themselves for, Allah, for Him all the time. Then please and please, brothers and sisters, take care of your dua. Next caller, please. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, I have a, a one question. It's uh, basically in two parts. Uh, Bismillah. Um, the question is, brother, that uh, obviously uh, there's uh, a, a lot of reward when you read your salah in the Congress, i.e. In the, in the masjid or in a group of people. That's but, right. Uh, uh, when, you're, when you're at home and yes. uh, you have your marim, you have your wife and you have your daughter, uh -huh. can uh, a husband lead the jamaat, you know, uh, for, uh, 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 with your with your wife or your or, or your daughter, um, and the other question is, if that's so, can also yeah. uh, a, a gentleman lead a, a jamaat um, when one of the female who's uh, not part of the family member, not marum, you know? Yes. Is that, is that possible at all, Shay? Could you clarify that? Jazakallah khairan. Yeah, yes. I mean, Jazakallah khairan. The husband, yes, but it's very important also. Also, there's, I would like to mention something else as well, which is very important, that you can do your salah in the masjid, and then you come back and you lead the rest of your family. Also, that, that's doable. 
And on the other hand, if the masjid is far away from you and sometimes like you cannot go for whatever reason, even though it's very important that you, you, you should pray in the congregation, then you can lead your family and your maharim. And also if there's another lady in the house who a neighbor or distant relation or friend of a family, yes, she can pray with them and you can lead the prayer. No problem with that, inshallah. With Zakallah khairan. Next caller, please. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam, sister. Um, I have a quick question um, for, for my mum. That's Bihar. very good that you, you are quick, inshallah, because the time is getting limited. Yeah, yeah, I was just told. Um, quick, just a quick question. Um, what is, she's, um, she's been in a lot of pain. She's got like piles. Uh -huh. uh, she's got an appointment tomorrow and she wants to fast. Okay. So she, she wanted to know that is it going to, because the doctors, they like, sometimes it's male doctors, they check um, like, you know, you properly and that. So she just wants to know, will, will her fast still be valid or not? That her fasting, inshallah, will be valid and that won't affect her fasting. Jazakillah khairan. Won't affect her fasting, inshallah. Next caller, please. Jazakumullah khairan. Then let me go back to this, um, the topic of the salah. The salah, brothers, in congregation is very important. It's very important. And as male, as men, and as Allah bless us with cars, bless us with whatever and the transport that we can use, we should pray in congregation. We should pray at the masjid. The masajid, Allah Ta'ala said, in ya'mur masajid, Allahi man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir. Those who attend the masajid is those who believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on the last day. Then it's very important that we take care of the Salat al Jama'ah. That's what Allah said. I will. I wish I, I will request the, the Imam to lead the prayer, one of the people to lead the prayer, and then I go out and, and ban the house of those who did not come out for Salat al Jama'ah, who did not come out for the congregation prayer. Then it's very, it's, it's that dangerous, that serious. The Prophet cannot ask to ban the, the people's houses for something easy and simple. Jazakumullah khairan. That's what you all, that's what we've been able to cover of your time. والسلام عليكم ورحمه وبركاته يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول واولي الامر منكم مدينه when he emigrated to Medina the Rasul عليه السلام find the Jews are fasting and then he asked them and the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And then they said, the reason we're fasting this is the day Allah Ta'ala gave success to Musa over Fir'aun, over Farwa, the enemy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the enemy of Islam. And then he said, Alayhi Salaam, we have more right to Moses than them and also we should fast. And also in another narration in Sahih Muslim, Abu Prasallam said, if Allah Ta'ala give me a long life and I leave for next year, I will fast the ninth and the tenth to be different than them. But he did not reach alayhi salatu wasalam. That's why it's sunnah to fast the ninth and the tenth or day before with the Ashura and day after with the Ashura. Whatever you could do. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa Nasta'inuhu wa Nasta'adihu wa Nasta'afiruhu wa Na'udhu Billahi min Shuroori Anfusina wa Min Sayyati Amalina من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحب العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear brothers and sisters
I'm your host, Brother Abdul Qadir Ali Ambe, and this is your program Islamica. And today we are talking about Ta'ashura, the tenth day of Muharram, which is an important day in Islam. And what we are saying in Islam, we don't mean only the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because as we all are aware that all the religions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Islam. And this day, the nine, the tenth day of Muharram, is the day Allah, Allah gave success to Moses over his enemy and the enemy of Islam, Farwa, Fir'aun. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Sahih Muslim, of Hadith Aisha first, she said, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah be pleased with her, um, the early days of Islam, of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to fast and Ashura, before Allah Ta'ala revealed, uh, before Allah Ta'ala made Ramadan obligatory upon the believers. And the Arabs, they used to fast as well. And then when Allah Ta'ala revealed Ramadan, then he stopped alayhi salatu was salam. And when he immigrated to, you should fast. And also, Sheikh Zayn Taymiyyah has mentioned that some people they have a shower on the day of Ashura and they put some kuhl on their eyes and they put hinna on their beads and on their hair and so on. All the hadith on that, it's all fabricated and it's all weak. And then we, we should not act upon this kind of a hadith, upon this kind of narrations then it's very important that we fast, insha'Allah, the day of Ashura and the day of Tasu'a, the 9th and the 10th, or the 10th and the 11th, which means Friday and Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday. And also there's some ahadith which forbids, which is all authentic as well, to single out fasting on Monday and uh, on Fridays and also on Saturdays and also on Sundays. But here now with the Ashura or uh, with the uh, Yom Arafah and so on, this kind of it's called in Islam the what is Sabab, the fasting or the worship for reasons. That's why Sheikh Al Imam Ibn Ruslan said, Wajzim bi idkhali dawati sababi, warwi anil imami dhannan tusibi. Ay, dawati sabab, it's definitely involved. Like the forbidden time of the salah, like after Asr, after Fajr. But if there is a salah with reason, like Tahiyat al Masjid or Ragatay al Tawaf and so on, then you have to do it. That doesn't get, is, is not part of the general forbidding. Similarly, of this Saturday and Sundays and Fridays, if you do not single it out, you fast on uh, Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday, inshallah, it's fine and it's because of, of reasons then it's very 